expert project evaluation and review technique. It helps us to find the uncertainty of the project. Now let's look at the university question. This is the question where we are given the data and we are, con we are asked to construct the project network, find the duration time and variance, critical path, expected project completion time and the probability of completing on or before 35 weeks. So let's start with constructing the project network. For constructing the project network, we have to find the number of activities who does not have an immediate predecessors. Here we have three activities who don't have immediate predecessors. So first I'll start with activity number one. And since it A, B and C does not have immediate predecessors, I'm connecting this to the act number one. So number two will be activity A. Three will be activity B. Will be activity C. For activity D, its immediate predecessor will be A. So with A as an immediate predecessor, I'm drawing activity D. Now for E, the immediate predecessor is A. But this E along with G acts as an immediate predecessor for activity G, J. So I should make sure that both E and J, G are together. Since I already don't have activity G, for now I don't have any issues. So I'm drawing the activity E with its immediate predecessor as A. So from A, I'm drawing activity E. Similarly for F, it does not act as an immediate predecessor for any other activity. But its immediate predecessor is A. So I am drawing F. For G, its immediate predecessor are B and C. Since B and C are two independent activities, I am going to make, it, make them as one by using a dummy variable. I can connect them using a dotted lines and name it as dummy variable 1. So for now, B and C. So activity number 3 represents both B and C which acts as an immediate predecessor for G. But G should stay along with E. Since already 6 represents activity E, I am joining it to 6. So this will be G. For H, immediate predecessor is C. So C is here and its immediate predecessor is H. And for D will be the immediate predecessor for activity I. And J will be the immediate uh, activity with an immediate predecessor of E and J. So this will be the E and J activity and I am joining it here. So now I have constructed the project network. In the duration they have specified three characters A, M and B. A specifies the optimistic time, B is the pessimistic time and M is the most likely time. So for the next question. They have asked us to find the expected duration and variance of each activity. So expected duration is nothing but the mean. Mean is represented as mu. Means formula will be mu is equals to a plus 4 times of m plus b by 6. So for calculating the mean for activity a, it will be 4 plus 4 into 4 will be 16 so 16 plus 4 will be 20 20 plus 10 will be 30 and 30 divided by 6 will be 5 similarly you can calculate the mean for all the other activities it is 3 6 4 2 5 3 4 3 and 7 now going to the variance which is the variance of each activity that is nothing but sigma square its formula is b minus a by 6 the whole square. Here b is the pessimistic time and a is the optimistic time. Now for calculating the variance for activity a it will be 10 minus 4 will be 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1 square is 1. Similarly calculate the variance for all the other activities which is 1.78, 4, 1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 
zero, one, and point eleven. So now I have calculated the expected duration and variance of each activity. Now let's go to the third question. It is used to find the critical path. Now for finding the critical path, we need two components: earliest start time and latest completion time. Earliest start time formula will be maximum of. So first, I am going to calculate the earliest start time of one activity, which I am representing it as J. So it will be the maximum of earliest start time of the previous activity plus distance between these two activities I and J. Similarly, latest completion time of the activity J will be minimum of latest completion time of the previous activity minus its distances between the two activities. So D I J. So before calculating the uh, earliest start time and latest completion time, I have to specify the distance between two activities. That will be nothing but the mean, which I have calculated. So for activity A, mean is five. So I am specifying it has here as five. For B, it is three. For C, it is six. For D, it is four. For E, it is two. For F, it is five. For G it is three. For H it is four. For I it is three, and for J it is seven. So to calculate the earliest start time and latest completion time, I'm drawing a box for each activity. The below one represents the earliest start time, and the latest one represents the latest completion time. Since initially we don't have any activities prior to this, I'm initializing it both to zero. Now let's start with calculating the earliest start time. For earliest start time for activity number two will be like earliest start time of the prior one, i, which is zero, plus the distance. So this is the distance five. So five plus zero will be five. Since here we have B and C as represented as one activity, we should take the maximum of those two. The maximum should be represented. For B, it will be three plus zero three, but for C, it is six plus zero six. Since six is the highest, then since six is greater than three, I am representing both the earliest start time as six. Since it is connected by a dummy variable d one. Now going with B for D. It's five four plus five. It is nine. For six, it has two activities coming to it from two and from three. We have to calculate both these things and we have to find the greater value. This will be five plus seven. Five plus two will be seven, and six plus three will be nine. Since six plus three is greater, I'm representing it here as nine. For seven, we have it has numbers coming from three numbers two, six, and five. So five. Plus five will be ten. Seven plus nine will be sixteen, and nine plus three will be twelve. Seven plus nine is greater, so I'm representing here as sixteen. So this is the last activity. So I'm initializing my latest completion time as the earliest start one. Earliest start time and the latest completion time of the last activity will be both will be same. Now after completing number seven, again I have to go to activity number six for calculating its latest completion time. It will be the minimum value and subtract. Subtracting of the latest completion time minus its distance. So for activity number six, it points out only to one activity. So seven minus sixteen will be nothing but nine. For for fifth activity, it has on pointing to only one activity that is seven. So we have the sixteen and three. Sixteen minus three will be thirteen. Pointing into the four now. Four minus sixteen will be. Four minus sixteen will be twelve. Similarly, since B and D already have a same together, B already points out to nine minus three six. Since the minimum value is six compared with, compared to this twelve, I am representing both as six because we have to find only the minimum value for the latest completion time. I am going for the second one. Since, since second one points to three activities five, six, and seven, I have to calculate all the three dis all the three and find out the minimum value. Thirteen minus four will be nine, and two minus nine will be seven, and five minus sixteen will be 
11. So the minimum value will be 7. So I am pointing out here as 7. So I have calculated the latest completion time and the earliest start time for all the activities. Now the critical part will be formed where the latest start time and the earliest completion time will be equal. Here starting with activity number 1. Then we have pointing to four, number 4. 0, 0, 6, 6. So this is equal. Then these two are equal. Then after activity number 3 to 6, this is equal. Then 6 to 7 because 9, 9 and 16, 16, this is equal. So my critical path will be C, D1, that will be dummy variable 1, G and J. This will be the critical path. Now we have to complete the now we have to calculate the expected project completion time. Expected project completion time will be nothing but the values, the mean value taken from the critical path. That will be 6 plus 3 plus 7 which is nothing but 16. So this will be represented as a mu value. Now let's go to the fourth question. We have found the critical path and the expected project completion time. Now let's go to the fourth question. Probability of completing the project on or, or before 35 weeks. So for calculating the probability value, the formula will be probability of x minus mu by sigma which is less than or equal to 35. So this is nothing but z. So probability of z less than or equal to 35. Now we have to find all these variables x, mu and sigma. x is nothing but this 35. Mu, sigma we have to calculate and mu is the value which we have already calculated that is 16. So mu is 16. Now we have to find the value for sigma. Sigma will be nothing but 4 plus 1.78 plus 0.11 sigma square. This will be nothing but 5.89. I got all these values from the critical path. Since my critical path is C, G and J, from C it is 4, from G it is 1.78 and from J it is 0.11. I have taken all those values. That is nothing but the sum of the variance of the critical activities. Sum of variance of the critical activities. Since I need to find only sigma, sigma will be root of 5.89 which is nothing but 2.427. So I can represent this as P of x minus mu by sigma which is nothing but z is less than or equal to 35 minus 16 divided by 2.427. Since this is z, it is represented as z, is less than or equal to by solving it you get a value of 7.82. From the normal distribution table we will get this value that is 0.999. So this will be the probability of completing on or before 35 weeks. Thank you.